Welcome back to the news today. This is the Daily Debate. Well, the United States Senate Intelligence Committee released a long-anticipated report on the CIA's methods of interrogating al-Qaeda suspects after 9-11. Well, the Obama administration made a last-ditch effort to suppress the report, and now the CIA is braced for what could become an embarrassing, even damaging exposure of their use of torture. Well, many have questioned whether the report should be published at all. But today, we're joined by Owen Alterman, a research fellow at the Institute for National Security Studies, and Dr. Anat Burko, terrorism expert at the IDC. Thank you both for joining us here. Well, before we get into that, while the public has a right to know what's being done for its protection, we asked our viewers today if these activities should remain classified. I'm in SIGSEC. Gives us a look at what you had to say. Uh, Ayman, what do you have for us? Yes, good evening, David. So American embassies are reportedly on high alert as details on a secret program under former President George W. Bush are set to be exposed. White House officials confirmed that the report by the CIA will be published despite warnings by the current administration. We wanted to see what our viewers thought of this move, given the sensitive nature of the information. We asked them, should the CIA torture report have been published? We should add here that U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry warned last week about the impact this report could have around the world. But let's see if our viewers agree. Here are the results of our daily poll. As you can see, David, 32 percent voted yes, that this report by the CIA should be published, but 63 percent voted no. Let's review what our viewers shared with us on Twitter and Facebook today. First up, we have Tommy, who tells us, as a U.S. citizen, I can only hope and pray that this is unfounded. Unfortunately, with the administration currently in office, nothing would surprise me. Now, Tommy might be referring to the policy of transparency that the current president, Barack Obama, had vowed to ensure. An argument could be made here about the cost of this transparency. Our next respondent, Diana, tells us, liberal Democrats go out of their way to do as much damage to U.S. and American people as possible. So Diana sees this as a rivalry between Democrats and Republicans. She goes on to mention Obamacare and immigration unlawfulness as two more examples. But let's take a look at one more comment. We have David, who tells us, the U.S. signed and ratified the United Nations Convention Against Torture. Apparently, he says, the CIA is not a part of the U.S. A sharp stab there at the CIA's expense, but also a valid point about whether the U.S. is upholding international laws in its management of terrorism. So several views on why the report should be published today, David, but it does seem like our viewers were generally in favor of the publication. I'm sure you and your guests will address these points in your debate. Back to you, David. Well, thank you, Ayman Siksek, for that. Uh, oh, and beyond the question of should this have been published, uh, the question lingers, I think, why does the public need to know such information? Um, what's your response to that? Well, I mean, I do think it's important. If we look back at American history, there's a long, unfortunate tradition of Americans overreacting to threats. Uh, if we look back as far as the beginning of the Republic and the Alien and Sedition Acts uh, passed to guard against, uh, against espionage and dissent, uh, to the Red Scare after World War I, to the internment of Japanese Americans in World War II, to McCarthyism in the Cold War. And I think the question is, will this go down as the equivalent of the post-9-11 era? I think that's a reasonable question. Is, is there a legal precedent sides. here or that something that makes this an obligation for the U.S. government to come out with? Not necessarily. Um, you know, any issue with it regards intelligence is, uh, is a sensitive one. But this was a long tussle between the chair of the outgoing chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, uh, Diane Feinstein, and the CIA. And in fact, the backstory to this involves charges and countercharges that the CIA was actually spying on Senate staff members who were looking into the report, and then charges by the CIA that the Senate staffers had actually gotten uh, access to an, un an unpermitted access to classified documents. So this is a rivalry, um, or at least an antipathy between these two parties that at least is a history of a few months. Uh, Dr. Burko, uh, one of the main concerns coming out following this report now is, uh, as John Kerry mentioned here, Secretary of State, that uh, U.S. installations and facilities, embassies around the world could be targeted, threatened by terror attacks. Uh, how realistic do you think that is that we're likely to see some attacks now or some acts against the United States abroad? I think that anyway they will try to target U.S. embassies and facilities, and we know that you know, on a daily basis. We've seen some similar things in the past after the uh, Abu Ghraib yes, prison Abu scandal. Ghraib. Exactly. That's it. Today, you cannot hide anything, actually. Even things that are going on in prison. And I think after I saw the pictures from Abu Ghraib, 
that it's a matter of not understanding, not the culture, not the language, and not how to communicate with those people. People who come to, who actually were arrested, have the deprivation and the lack of freedom inside jail. If you want to communicate with them, even for interrogation, you need to have a deep understanding who are the enemy. And sometimes I feel like when I saw the pictures with the woman, naked men, they don't understand even the gender roles in this society and humiliate those people. I think that this is something that I think that the Americans learn a lot from this uh, actually act. And, uh, and in basic, not to put prisons out of the country because it's like... This has been the main uh, reason, yes, keeping detainees off, offshore and uh, rules right. don't necessarily apply. This is apply. the main idea with Guantanamo, for example, right. here. Uh, what do you think the likely response is internationally to this? I mean, this has gotten big coverage today, yet unlike Abu Ghraib and some of the other examples, there's not strong imagery to go with this. It's not a, a video that'll go viral. There's not pictures hitting, hitting the media. It's a report. The details are obviously uh, ruffle the feathers, if you will. This is definitely not easy stuff to stomach. I mean, some of these things, detainees being kept awake for over seven days at a time, threatening to kill the families of detainees. Obviously, a harsh content to this report, but, but not the visual content that we've seen stir up international sentiments. Do you think this will go somewhat quieter than previous incidents because of that? Well, it's interesting, actually. It's a terrific question. It's interesting. The initial reports in the hours after this is released is that on, uh, monitors of jihadist websites are saying that there is not yet uh, a strong reaction to this, but they say that that could change as the information spreads. Uh, it's a good question, and you're right that it's different from the uh, video that was released uh, a couple years ago that, again, much uh, disputed whether that led to attacks or not and other incidents. I also think the other things that, that distinguish this from Abu Ghraib is the passage of time from the events themselves, uh, the fact that there is a new administration uh, and a new face of the United States, and maybe just as importantly, the spread of terrorism, especially in so many parts of the Muslim world, where Muslims themselves are being killed and being subjected to and being victimized by terror. The question is, will that change the perception and will that give more sympathy to these types of uh, steps meant to counter terror. And as, and as repulsive as some of these details are, is this shocking, really? I mean, people understand this is an ugly world, an ugly, an ugly battle. We need to understand, we need to ask if this is the effective way to interrogate people. Which has been one of the pieces of the report to because, come out saying this is not effective, you know, that these methods didn't not produce effective. great intelligence. Right. And I think that the attitude must be different and to try to come not to to use torture but to use the brain you're an advocate of, of 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 a certain interrogation that it doesn't have hands on here right i mean explain yeah. that to us i can tell you from my experience more than 20 years in the israeli prison working with security prisoners there are people from Hamas, the head of Hamas, like Sheikh Ahmed Yassin, the parliament member of Hamas, Islamic Jihad, and others that I spent like hours, years, and they opened everything. I know details that nobody With no knew. sleep deprivation. No, just, you know. Threats it, against family. It comes, to, it comes to almost a feeling of therapy. They were waiting for my visit to talk with them. You need to start with the leaders. If you start with the leaders, other people will be open, open up and, you know, speak frankly. Uh, oh, and again, you, you touched on this a moment ago about uh, the question that comes to my mind, too, looking at this and a lot of people, why is this coming out now? Why release this report? Who does it benefit? And I think you touched on an interesting point that there's a power struggle within the U.S. government. Who's the most powerful agency? Again, whether it's Congress, the FBI, the CIA others. Uh, is that what we're witnessing here? This is uh, basically an internal power struggle in the United States? There's no question it's political. And if we look at the reactions today to the report, remember this was a report released by the committee majority, which uh, up until, until January 3rd still is the Democrats. Uh, and the Republicans released a minority report where they took issue with some of the report's conclusions, as did the CIA itself which on the question of whether the methods were effective, the CIA is saying that they were and that the report doesn't, doesn't correctly um, evaluate the they intelligence value. They about a ticking bomb. You don't have the time to invest for such a, you know, communication way. 
Uh, this is this is the, the, the problem. This is, this is being spoken about post 9/11. Here, there was yeah. an exactly. air of panic essentially. Right, and I think that's, that's a very very important point. I mean, what this report and what, uh, what revisiting this issue reminds us is that this was a society and a government and an intelligence service that was completely right. unprepared for this for this uh, for this scenario. And who everyone looked at is saying, well, how did you not prevent this? So the pressure was on. Well, sure. I mean, not only, but how did you not prevent that, but what else was out there? Remember, there were other parts of the 9-11 plot that were themselves foiled, attacks on the Capitol building and on the White House. And no one knew. there was. It was a, a, a frightening period of time. But again, the society was very unprepared. And I think for the society to be unprepared is one thing. For the intelligence agency, for the central intelligence agency to be so unprepared, psychologically, logistically, in terms of its personnel and its procedures, that, that may raise some interesting questions. Is that an excuse, Dr. Burko, this, uh, you know, the, take the situation into context post 9-11? I mean, you right now uh, describe the situation in Israel, a country always under those pressures, mm -hmm. uh, always with the ticking bomb in the backyard here where a different approach has been employed. So uh, do you think that and this is more a viable if excuse? If you speak with a guy from the Shin Bet, they will tell you. It's much more effective because we are under the Supreme Court, actually, decision. And uh, to honor the people, to communicate with them, to understand we are the enemies sometimes, but you have your dig dignity as a prisoner and not to harm them and to come to a way that you can get a lot of in to gather intelligence in a very sophisticated way. But not, you know, it's like the problem starts with the ticking bomb. And uh, when you have a ticking bomb, I think that people will say, we don't have the time to invest in such an interrogation. Ever, this is the problem. Did, did, it's, did Israel uh, ever entertain this is the, the idea of, of taking on these U.S. tactics, for example, holding holding detainees for years without charge offshore so that uh, laws don't apply. Is this something ever even been entertained by the Israeli in Israel, intelligence community? In Israel, they have visits from the family once a month. In Israel, they can call their home. In Israel, they are in groups. We, you know, not everything is so good in Israel, because if you put a group from Hamas uh, in the same uh, area, you actually solely the group and they can act together like a, a unit in the army. So it's not so good. But let me tell you something. Uh, President Obama promised that he will shut down. Over six years ago, elected on this one of his right. many things on his platform. And it's still open. Guantanamo, no it's still open. But it's still open, you know. Why is so that? it's like because I think that the uh, in America the security agencies feel much more secure that they can have this place, you know, that nobody can touch them and they can do whatever they want. Do you think Obama realizes right? this is a necessary evil, a place like Guantanamo? Well, I think he's found that there's problems in terms of what to do with the what to do with the detainees. Where to send them? Can they go back to their countries? Will their countries accept Six them? Six being sent to Uruguay. Exactly. But how many can that be done with? I mean, it's, I think it's a it's been a, a, a problem. One interesting point on the Israeli example. On one part of the of the report said that the CIA Office of General Counsel actually cited the Israeli Supreme Court decision as a precedent which would allow these right. types of tactics. So it's interesting to hear that in Israel that decision has been interpreted very differently. Um, so that spoke just about a ticking bomb. It was allowed just for a ticking bomb and not like the torture. It was not what we saw in Abu Ghraib. It was sure. humiliation. It of wasn't course. not. It wasn't effective. It wasn't interrogation. It, wasn't it was interrogation. nothing. Right. It was not nothing. It's just well, humiliation. Well, no one's defending what happened in Abu Ghraib as right. opposed to this, where the so, CIA and the Republican members of the committee are actually coming focused out. Focused on the it. methods of interrogation, the methods right. that were the employed to extract information. Be, right. Right. And the other the other problem was in America that the people who interrogate sometimes were a double agent. So it was also because after, after September 11, there were not so many people who spoke Arabic that they can use to interrogate other people. And they took people who were double agents. It's a problem. What do you make of President Bush now coming out, standing behind all this, not pointing the finger? What does that say to you? Oh, and Dick Cheney as well, and the form the officials who are involved. Listen, I, I think that none of us can actually 
understand what it was like to sit in that chair at that time period. And one has to have some sympathy for what the decision makers were facing during those crucial months and even years after 9-11. And this is part of their legacy. And they continue to feel that it's something that they can defend that was important and that this is simply a political attack or even if it's not a political attack, that it's simply wrong. And I, I do think that this is an important public debate, which is why I think it's worthwhile from the American perspective, all things being considered, to have this out there and be part of the public debate. Uh, and it's fair to have both sides be represented and have the, the arguments be aired. Uh, in terms so you think of there's something healthy to putting it into the public arena. Absolutely, I do. Now, again, any any decision like this has to have a, an element of cost-benefit analysis to it, and there is this risk of potential retaliatory attacks, and we'll have to see what whether that materializes or whether, as you said, whether that's just something that would have been done anyway, and this is a pretense. But the, I don't think it can be underestimated what the value is of having this public debate and having this be aired. Well, thank you both for contributing. We're out of time sure. here. Uh, Owen Alterman, Dr. Anat Burko, thank you very much. And thank you to our viewers. I'm David Matlin here in the Jaffa Port of Israel and wherever you are in the world. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you again tomorrow night.